Well, now that we're done with the kitchen, it's off to the dining room. I know I've been kind of dreading this a little bit because of those windows and making them look good, but I think we shot it in a way that's going to allow us to put them in there and make it look really good. I'm excited to try this. I hope you are too. Let's hop in. All right, into the dining room. Oh boy, this is our first exposure. And I, I gotta tell you, I, I really honestly almost like this just the way it sits i i really think that's a a pretty picture but it's not good enough so we're going to combine that with um, an underexposure and probably bring the start with this as a base and then bring that other one in and then we're going to use a highlight here for this bench it's not much to look at, but the idea here is if you've got something in the shadows, sometimes it's a good idea just to bring it in, just to complete the picture. So we'll combine those three with this window pole, which again, I went a little bit more yellow on, um, and I did that on purpose. And then here's our flash. Obviously we can see the flash in the windows, but the window frames are just perfect and we'll cut in you know, this picture for those windows and everything will be fine. So we've got that. And then we've got the second flash. This is the adjustment flash or the light from the window flash. And I think that is it. So let's go ahead and put these all together. I'm gonna to do this one from the ground up so that you don't miss anything. So I'm selecting, holding my command key and selecting the layers that I like, and then sending those to edit as layers in Photoshop. Here is Photoshop. Um, waiting for them all to come up. And the first thing I do is I hit my F2, which aligns everything. Um, again, I've forgotten where the heck this stupid command is. That's why it's a shortcut on my keyboard. All right, so basically we've got everything in reverse order in this stack. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the top two layers, the, the darkest layer and the medium layer, and make those my bottom most layers in that same exact order. Then I'm gonna put the highlight right on top of it. And then we're gonna hit um, a black layer on both of those. Um, this is our window pull layer. I'm just gonna turn that off for now. And then I'm going to take these three flash layers, put them all into a folder so that I can treat them like one and give them a white layer. And then I'll mask the top two layers out. So this is what we're starting with, is that flash in the corner. So obviously what I need to do is get rid of these highlights and those highlights and probably tone this down some. So let's do that with the next layer and a white brush. Make it wide. And let's see what we get. There we go. Don't want to go too far over, but that, that works. And then let's bring this in. And there, we've got the character of that light nicely, I think. Now let's just take a look at this and see what this does to it. Oh, this is a more flat light. Um, I don't really, I think this is that dark area I was talking about filling in. And I think, you know, if we just bring in a little bit there, and maybe a little bit along here. There, that looks pretty good, I think. All right, so we've got our flash layer all set up. I, that's ready to build from. Um, yeah, let's do the nasty part now. Um, let's go to our window pole. And all I'm gonna do is use the, the pen tool and just surround. Um, I go down, there's marks like black lines that go down those, go there. And then once you get to here, you can double click and it finishes that one for you. So there's my perfect selection. My next selection, I have to hold down the shift key 
otherwise it'll erase that first collection uh, selection. So there, it is a little bit more, you know, you have to be a little bit more careful. Um, there, there are a couple of objects in here, but it really doesn't take all that long. I know people hate doing this, but you know what? That's part of the job. Whoops, I went too soon on that. There we go. All right, now we're going to get all these windows and... I will probably just fast forward to the end because this is pretty dang boring and I am not smart enough to talk through this whole thing and entertain you guys. So just pretend. All right, there we go. That took all of two minutes. Two minutes. To make that selection I just hit the map button and voila I'll bring that down a little bit um, but by and large that's gonna work it looks very flashy here but that's because it's right on top of the flashy layer and that's why it looks like that that is pretty darn usable so let's turn that off now and turn the flash layer off and let's build up our ambient layer from the dark see i think i'm probably going to leave the ceiling just the way it is uh, maybe just bring in a little bit of um, a lighter but i'm not going to do much up there whoops wrong color got to be on the mask there see just a little and bring it in more on this side because that's where the windows are. And then let's bring this in. I think I want this whole, pretty much all of this brought up. I don't care about the windows. We're blowing out the windows in this, but we, we do want whatever those things are called that are between the windows. Pilasters, whatever, I don't know. Not an architect. All right, so that looks pretty good. Let's do the same now with the highlights. I'm going to bring my flow down even more because I want this to be even more subtle. There, see how quick that fills out? I don't want it. And that's bringing it down some. So let's think about too, especially when you're bringing this layer in where the light's coming from. So bring that like there and here but you can leave some shadow there. And, you know, just do this by eye just till it looks really good. Um, some glare on that table. So let's take that down a little bit. I hit X. I'm sorry, I didn't say that out loud. I hit X, which makes it a black pen. All right, I think we've got those all done. So that looks, I think, really good. Let's bring back in the flash and take the flash down. You know, right about in there looks really good. That looks, I think, pretty darn good. Okay, now we go on to the white mask on the flash layer and we paint in black and again i'm usually pretty big on this there look for those shadows first now look at we're trying to get those walls to not look flashy you know you just keep painting that ambient in really the the, the whole object here is to get the color from the flash and the shadows from the ambient. And that will look pretty good. There we go. Did you expect that that was going to come out of that? I'm always surprised. Now let's add the window pole. Okay, that's a little strong still, don't you think? Let's bring that down to about there. Okay, and things are pretty low contrast here too. We're 
still going to have to bring in a lot more contrast. But um, that is a good place to start from. I'm going to save it back to Lightroom from here. Return trip. And let's close out of this. Now let's do all our straightening. I'm going to do that black line in the window and I'm going to do this for my straighten line here. And there we go. That looks really good. Now I'm going to do something, I think, holding down the space bar and I'm clicking here and I'm zooming in. I had thought I had seen some chromatic aberration. Um, but I'm really not seeing it now. Um, but I would take care of it now if I were to see it. Um, chromatic aber... Oh, there's a little bit right in there. Do you see that little bit of purple? Yeah, so let's take that out. What you want to do first is in the, the purple hue or the green hue. Those are the two areas. Uh, first, if you find purple on the right side, you'll find green on the left side. They, they go like that. Um, it'll shift one way on one side, the other way on the other. And then also sometimes the purple will actually be blue and look like the blue in the green hue. And so it can be a little tricky sometimes. But anyway, you zoom in on it like this, you look for it, and then you try and use your purple hue slider to include the color that you see. You don't want to grab a whole bunch of color. You want to just try and be as specific as you can. Then start to bring up the amount until you see it disappear. And did I just waste all my time? Maybe we need to make this selection a little bigger for right now. Oh, there, it's gone now. Did you see that? Here, let me turn this off. There you see it. There it's gone. So I had to go for a much wider swath than I would normally go to. So now let's bring the blue in till we see that red appear again. And there it is. So we back it off a little bit there. And now that chromatic aberration is gone. Now let's go on to the other side. And I think generally what I have found is if you match the same swaths, you should get, there we go, that took it out. It looked red to my eye, but it was coming through as blue. But generally, whatever you do on one part, you do the same on the other, and it'll clean it up. So there we go. Those are pretty much all I would do to this image on its return trip. Straighten it and remove the chromatic aberrations. Do the things that you need to do that, that may not necessarily be repeatable between the multiple layers, but now that we're on one layer that you can do to all the layers and make it look good. So there we are. I think that looks pretty good. Uh, let's round trip it back to Photoshop again. Note that we don't want an edit original this time. We want it with the Lightroom adjustments. So it's now compacted down to one layer and one image. There we are. All right, so that is looking pretty good. I don't think I see anything that needs to be cleaned up. Let me show you a cheat you can do um, just for fun. Um, I may or may not use it here, I don't know. Add a new layer and then let's cut a mat that is just the top of this table. Again, we're looking at square things or rectangular things. So these are really easy to cut and you know they just take a second or two to do by and large. And this is the only tricky part. We're way zoomed in. You do not have to be as exact on these as you might think you need to. Especially if you do a, um, I think I do, yeah, I, I feather it to f um, two of those thingies. I think they're called pixels. 
All right, so let's cut our mat on top of that. Okay, so now we've got our mat on top of that. Um, there's a couple things we can do now that we've got that mat. Number one is I put that mat on a blank layer. So I can go over here, get my paintbrush, get a really pretty version of this brown. And now I can, um, oh, I need to be on the, that, not the, mask. If you're on the mask layer, you can only choose whites and blacks. Um, when you're on the, the layer layer, <laughs> um, that's where you get your colors. So let's go in and that's a nice rich brown. Nope, that almost looks black. Let's go there. Okay, now if I paint here, nothing happens here. Only happens when I paint here because of that mask. So there we go. And, you know, that takes down the glare a little bit. Um, you know, I'm, I'm painting really thin. But it also takes out a lot of the character, the, the wood. You don't see the wood grain. That's because we're in normal mode. If we come down here to um, color mode, look at that. We've got all the grain back and um, we've cut down that glare. Let's see the difference. See it? And it takes some of that blue reflection out too. Sometimes it's a lot of fun to go through and look and see what all these different combined layers will do. And sometimes you can be surprised. Screen would look, yeah, screen looks good. Uh, multiply looks good, but then you'd have to take this way down to make that work. But, um, you know, there's a bunch of different ways to save yourself from glare. This, I think, changes the color of the brown too much. I'm going back to color, and I think that probably looked the best for matching. So there we go. That's just a cheat. Here's another way to do it. Do a, a curves layer. Um, delete your white layer mask and use the same layer mask on the curve. I uh, hit the option, I think the Alt key in PC We'll do the same thing, but you hold that and drag it up and you'll get an exact copy of the mask. That's a really handy tool. Now we go back to our curves and I love the little finger guy. You just go in here and you just do that and you bring that down a little bit. And curves is such a fun, fun tool. Look at that. I don't believe in removing all the glare just like I don't believe in super high quality window poles. Glare is natural. It happens. It's there. So, you know, welcome it. Use it. But you can lessen it. And here's two different ways to lessen it. Got, I think, a really good image. But again, the, you know, I'm seeing some blue down here. Let's, let, I'm sorry about this. Let's add a hue saturation layer. Let's go to blues. And let's lessen the blues. And then just so it doesn't kill the whole thing, we're going to hit Command I to invert that mask. And then I am going to whiten it right here. That's where I was seeing the blues. There we go. That's another good way to get rid of some color contamination. All right, I think we're good. I'm going to hit F3 to combine everything all to one layer because we need it one layer again. And now we're going to do our... Photo AI, denoise, and then sharpen the subject. But I, I sharpen everything, but I also do it at a low level. I always bring it down to no more than 20. Um, and then run it. Yeah, that looks pretty good. Now we're going to make another copy of it. And we're going to do our Nick layer. Nick Color Effects Pro. All right, so we'll start with Pro Contrast. And I just kind of use these to bring it into where it looks natural to me. I use Dynamic Contrast and Correct Contrast, and those, those get me where I want. Color Cast Correction, you know, I don't have a Color Cast, so... Ah, it is a little yellow, but I don't think, 
I think it looks fine. That looks good. Um, now we're going to add um, dark and light and center. And we'll hit a plus there. And I move, I always move the center to the center. <laughs> That's why it's called that. And then um, bring up the border a little bit. Um, and I think that, that shows the, the room pretty good. Let's hit apply. I think that's good. I think we've got this room done. And let's compare that to before Nick. See, it just bumps it up a little bit. I think it looks really good. I'm seeing something over here. What is that? It could be, kid. yeah, it's kids' crayons on the wall. Cannot correct that. Sorry. All right. I think that is good. What I've tried to do here is show you how to fix and pull in windows in a super fast, super easy way and make them look natural. I think this looks all in all pretty dang good. That should do it for this one. Next, the rest of the house. Well, until then, may your next shoot be your best shoot. Thank you very much.